My name is Dr. Zainab Al Mukhtar. I'm here with my lovely patient Sandra, who is keen to have a non surgical rhinoplasty. As with all non surgical rhinoplasties, I first perform safe mapping to ensure that I have preempted the position of the vessels prior to injection. In the case of a very high dorsal hump, more ultrasound gel is required. So the higher the bump, the more the need for ultrasound gel. This is important. When scanning, we want to ensure that we're not pressing down too much. This then allows for the gel to move away too much and would then require more gel placement throughout. If we can hold the probe quite steadily without pressing down too much, we can preserve the gel in the position that we want it. You can see the gel at the top of the image. You can see the hyperechoic line, which must be very clear at the very base. You can see the dermis. You should be able to see the superficial fatty layer and then a hypoechoic area just above the bone. That's usually a very thin layer of deep fatty tissue above which there is a very thin layer of muscle. We are now scanning in B mode which allows us to just demarcate the layers and I can see a little dark lumen just in the superficial fatty layer, which may be a vessel, but we're going to find out when we switch to color mode. Color mode. Indeed, the position of that dark lumen does correlate to the position of this vessel. So initially, I can see that there is this vessel and I can see that it is above the muscle layer. I spend enough time scanning this region to follow the trajectory of this vessel. Because as we know, vessels can be tortuous. They can move through different layers and we want to just check. What I'm really looking for is whether or not this vessel touches the periosteum because that's the intended position of deposition of filler. As I move inferiorly down the nose along the dorsal hump, we see that the tissue layers become much thinner. We raise the color box and we can see a nice vessel there. The intention is to stay in the midline because that is the intended location of injection. Now, what we can see here, freeze, is the location at which point you can see that the hyperechoic line, the bone, the nasal bone, stops. And we have the junction between the bone and the cartilage here. Unfreeze. In this case, I don't have any intention to inject that area, but I still like to scan the whole length of the nose. We are now at the position, freeze. This is the position at which point the lower lateral cartilage domes are beginning. Unfreeze. What am I scanning for? I'm scanning to assess the position of the vessels. How deep are they? How close are the vessels to the cartilage? Because the cartilage is the point at which I want to deposit my filler. Freeze. We can see that there is a vessel fairly deep sitting just above the cartilage as we approach the very tip of the nose, the pronasale. I will follow the course of this vessel to decide whether it is safe to inject. My intended area of injection is further below this point. Unfreeze. Decrease depth. Freeze. We can see the vessel is sitting above the cartilage. There is often missing muscle layer in the nasal tip. The vessel appears to be in the superficial fatty layer. I'll continue scanning to assess. Unfreeze. 
freeze. Just to clarify, this is the sagittal view. This dark area here, the anechoic area, is the cartilage. And this is the hypodermis or the superficial fibro fatty layer underneath the dermis. Where we would expect to see the vessel is in this superficial fibro fatty layer underneath the dermis. In some people, the vessel will be quite superficial, far away from the point of deposition of filler. For some people, it will sit deeper within that layer, close to the cartilage. The closer it is to the cartilage, the higher the risk of vascular injury. This is a really important angle because it allows us to see a little bit more about what's going on with the vessels using the knowledge we have from the scanning of the sagittal and the transverse view we can establish the course of the vessels and the overall depth of the vessels so we gather the information from both views to make decisions what we can see is quite interesting about this particular case is freeze the height of each cartilaginous dome is quite different on the left cartilaginous dome, we can see a much higher, much more differently placed position of the dome compared to the right-hand side, which explains the asymmetry that we find and we see in this patient's nose externally. The usual position that we want to deposit the filler is right on the cartilage. And so I'm scanning to check whether the vessels are sitting in that position. Power mode. Before starting this, I have already marked with a pen my intended position of injection. And therefore I am placing the probe directly on that point. I'm now moving my scanner up towards the supratip notch region where you can see that the height of the cartilage looks a little bit more similar and as we go back down towards the pronasale which is the very tip of the nose the dome changes shape again. What we're seeing is that there doesn't seem to be any deep vessels sitting right on the cartilage in the central area of the nasal tip. There are on the lateral areas but not in the central area and therefore we can consider injection on the cartilage here. Okay, freeze. So I'll do a depth measurement now. I have two millimeters on the left dome, 2.8 millimeters. Capture that, okay. Then we'll go to the right dome again. These are two cartilaginous domes on the nasal tip. They are different left and right. So I'm doing the right hand side one now. Freeze. Okay, quick depth measurement here. On the right hand side, right dome, we have a distance of 3.3 millimeters. Actually, it's a little bit longer, excuse me. 3.7 millimeters is what we have between the top of the cartilage up to the dermis. This means we've got more space to inject on the right dome than we do on the left. It's just a point that is important for me as I plan my injection amounts as well as my injection depth of the needle. So I'm happy with all of that now and I'm going to clean this and we can begin treatment. So I'm marking between the intercanthal line. This gives me my upper sort of limits in terms of the radix. It's a very narrow area that I can inject here. Okay, I have my midline demarcated. Always clean lots and little scratch coming. I still aspirate, presuming that we don't know everything. Now there's a hard bony stop because I know I'm on periosteum, I can feel it with the tip of the needle. I've aspirated and then very small micro aliquot. Always slow. Walking it down again just a little 
aspirating again. Another small micro aliquot. Small micro aliquot. And exit. So, I'm happy with that projection. I've got to the tip of the nose. So, before we did the treatment of the nasal tip so far, there was an inequality in the height of the two domes, where the left dome was much higher than the right dome. Having now treated the right dome, there, are, there is an equal height of both, which is visible for me at this view, um, looking from this direction. So I'm now happy with the symmetry. I can come back now and project a bit further on both sides. Keeping in mind that my injections are very much still central, there are two tiny little positions either side of the midline. We're not deviating laterally where we saw the vessels on the ultrasound. Oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs>